Hello everyone, this is Jamie here. Welcome to another session of Vista Export Services. In this session, I'll be taking you through the process of using an amazing plugin called QProxys. QProxys is a 3ds Max plugin compatible with any rendering engine. Like most proxies, it reduces the polygon count in a scene and helps speed up renders substantially. What sets this proxy plugin apart from others is the ability to bring back the original mesh with textures and modifiers previously applied from any rendering engine. Not to mention other great features such as relink proxies to current folder, remove and use files and much more. So without further ado, let's start by googling the name QProxys. Scroll down and click on the Spline Dynamics link seen here. Here's a quick introductory video about its capabilities and some examples. Here, you can buy the light version or the full version. Alternatively, simply download the trial version by clicking on this link here. This link here redirects users to the manuals page where there's a full description of all its functions. Once the script is downloaded, simply go to the scripting toolbar and choose to run script, followed by selecting and opening it from its location. This is the main download box. To create a toolbar similar to these ones here, simply watch the previous tutorials. By default, it's set to create a proxy from static objects as seen here. To generate a proxy, simply click on this button to create proxies. In this scene, we currently have four identical shares as a mesh. By turning one of them into a proxy and instancing them, it will make the overall scene much lighter and quicker to render. As mentioned earlier, here we have the option to convert the proxies from static objects. Animated PRS. PRS stands for Position, Rotation and Static. Here we have the option for animated with deformations. All geometry. This section allows users to automatically select multiple objects in a scene by the minimum and maximum number of faces of each selected object. By enabling the use size filters, you can also select objects in a scene by their minimum and maximum dimensions. When creating proxies, the default option is to create from selected objects in a scene only. You can change it to all geometry to create proxies from all the geometry in a scene. This function includes all instance objects. This function ignores hidden objects. While the proxies are being created, this option automatically converts similar objects into instances. Instance copies are a lot quicker to render than simple copies. This function converts group objects as a single proxy file. Under polygon reduction, the default method is set to multi-resolution. The default value of 500 sets the average number of vertices displayed in a viewport to be quite smooth. To optimize the resolution display in a viewport, let's change it to 300 instead. Users can choose to optimize the resolution display in a viewport as multi res or pro optimizer. And the match type, users can choose from source or any of the listed types seen here. Again, these are for display purposes in a viewport only. If you had to choose a custom match type, then you would have had to pick an existing proxy match in a scene to be displayed as a match type. The save objects function allows users to choose how the proxies will be generated. It's set to save objects altogether by default. However, users can choose to save by group, by layer or individual. In the message tools bar, under reference files, you can set the location where the proxy file should be saved into. Otherwise, it'll be saved in a default folder. By clicking this button, you will open the current folder. This button removes and use proxy files. And this button collects reference files. This button selects proxies in the scene. This button brings original meshes with materials and modifiers back into the scene. This one automatically relinks proxies to current folders. This button relinks proxies to new file. This one selects proxies with missing references. And this button opens the proxy reference files. Back in the Create Proxies tab, let's click on the Generate Proxies button while one of the chairs is selected. Click Yes to accept to generate proxies. This is a proxy created with the vertices displayed in the viewport A300. In the Manage Tools tab, here we have the reference node's name, which is the name of the original chair. Under Reference File, you have the directory where the proxy reference file was saved into. By clicking this button, you can change the proxy file location. The X reference mode function is currently referencing the original materials from its location saved, no longer from this open scene. To show you an example, let's open the material editor and isolate the proxy chair and click Render. Next, exit the isolation and assign a different material to the chair, followed by clicking to render again. As you can see, even though a new material was assigned to the chair, the original materials were rendered because the X-Reference Mode function is still enabled. Let's disable the X-Reference Mode function and render it again. 
As you can see, with the X reference mode function disabled, the materials are now being referenced from this scene, which is amazing. Let's enable the X reference function again. In a Manage Tools tab, as mentioned earlier, this button brings back the original mesh with textures and modifiers. Click on it to bring back the mesh and accept to bring the, the original object. As you can see, the chair mesh has been brought back with the original material on its original location. As an example, let's select the floor surface, which has the floor generator modifier applied to it. Next, go to the Create Proxies tab and click to Generate Proxies. The average vertices value was set to 300. That's why the surface display in the viewport is a bit dropped. To bring the original mesh with the material and modifier applied, simply click on this button as previously done. As you can see, the floor mesh was brought back with the material and modifier previously applied which is an amazing feature and currently the best in the market. Next, select the chair. As previously done, go to the Create Proxies tab. Increase the average vertices to 500 and create its proxy. I select the chair and deselect the Use Proxies Render button. Click to render again. As you can see, by deselecting the Use Proxies and the Render button, the polygon reduction has been used in a viewport. Select the Use Proxies Render button again and click to render. Before sending the final render, let's copy Instances Proxy at Render Table. and delete the original mesh chairs. As a final example, to see how the minimum and maximum number of faces work, let's start by creating four spheres as separate copies. Select all four spheres and click to generate proxies. This max script dialog is a warning that no objects in the scene were found with this minimum number of faces. The spheres have less than a thousand faces each. Click OK to close the dialog. Decrease the minimum number of faces to one instead. Select all spheres and click to generate proxies. Again, as you can see, the proxy was not generated. This has happened because the minimum number of faces was set to one, but the average number of vertices is still at 500. Low poly objects often have less than 500 vertices on average. Reduce the average number of vertices to 100. These two values are totally dependent on one another. Select all four spheres and click to generate proxies again. As you can see, the proxies have now been generated. This function to convert copies to proxies also converts the copied spheres to instances of one another. Back into our main scene, let's check the final render. This is the final render, which was rendered a lot quicker because of the instance proxies. I really hope you found this tutorial useful, like and share it, and I hope to see you on my next one.